today we're going to talk about how to play a four string chord. So the violin has four strings as you know, or hopefully you know, if you don't know now you do know. Okay, so you can play chords on four strings because a chord just means more than one note being played at the same time. So you can't play um, every single string on the violin at the same time. However, because the violin resonates, um, which is like the strings echo, you can use that to your advantage in order to make it sound like you are playing all four strings at the same time. So there are two different ways of playing uh, four string chords. You can either play all four strings as quickly as possible, like this. And then allow that sound to echo out and reverberate. Or you can play the lower two strings very quickly and then linger on the upper two strings like this. Okay. Or you can play the lower two strings with the first half of the bow and the upper two strings with the second half of the bow like this. Okay. So either way that you choose to do it will be appropriate to the kind of music you're playing. And if you're playing a very up piece, piece of country music, for example, then you want to be very like quickly, maybe. If you're playing a very slow piece of music, uh, like the Bach Adagio from Sonata Number no. 1 in G minor, then you'll be playing it probably very, very slowly. So you might want to split that chord into two like this. Okay, so a lot of students find that they struggle to get each of those four strings clear when they're playing a chord that uses every single finger. So if you're using number fingers number one to four um, on each of the strings, then what can happen is the strings get muted or one of them squeaks or, you know, there's all sorts of problems. So I'm just going to give you a quick troubleshoot guide on what to look out for which might be causing those problems. So let's take a minor chord because that's got what we call a bar in it. So there are form A minor notes. So on the lower two strings, you can try this now if you have a violin, we're gonna place our first finger on both the G string where the A is, first finger, and the D string where the E natural is, okay? so. You should get both of those notes to be in tune. If they're not, normally it's because the first finger is not uh, in the correct position. So what is the correct position? Let me just show you. So you want to have your fingernail facing you, okay? If it's touching both strings at the same place, then normally both of those notes will be in tune unless the strings are not in tune so you want to check that your strings are in tune first that can be a big cause of this now i have my fingernail facing me because if it's on its side like that then i probably am less likely to be touching both of the strings at the same position so one will be higher than the other one in terms of tuning so check is my fingernail facing me okay so facing me as in when you're playing the violin facing you Okay. Just try that one now. Another reason why you might not be in tune is because one of your fingernails is too long. So that's another reason to uh, chop your fingernails when playing the violin if you want to play really good double stops. So to get a note exactly in tune, we want to play as close to the fingernail as possible because that's where the finger is pointiest therefore can be most accurate. So the part of the finger for this uh, first finger note that I'm playing that's touching the strings is either side, let me just show you a close up, either side of my nails. So let me just grab you a pen and I'm going to put dots on my fingers exactly where I'm touching the strings so you can see at home. Oh, and that pen doesn't work, just bear with me. That's the pencil. We could be here all day. Here we go, got one. So there we go so either side of the fingernail like that 
should be where you're touching both of those strings and your fingernail should be facing you. So that is the first thing to check. Um, and that's only relevant, as I said, if you're playing more than one string with the same finger. Okay, so the second finger of A minor is C natural on the A string. So that goes right next to your first finger because C natural is a semitone above where A natural and E natural on the G and D strings are um, in terms of the spacing of the fingers. So if it was a tone, it would look like that, but it's a semitone, so they should be touching, okay? And if they're both touching, you should be in tune, okay? And then your third finger, which is gonna go on A, on the E string, third finger A on the E string. So we are touching that string with the third finger, one tone above where the second finger is, okay? So as you can see there, there's a bit of a gap about a finger's width distance, uh, roughly, in order to gauge where the A is. So you're always having to gauge. So if, if fingers are a semitone apart, they're touching. If they're a tone apart, then there's about a finger's width distance between them, okay? So, let's try that. Okay, so I've just noticed that my first finger shifted position a bit, so... Let's just check that again. Place the second finger next to it. And then the third finger. Try not to squeeze the neck too much with this side of the hand. If you're squeezing the neck with this side of the hand here, that can prevent you from placing your third finger down. So try to have a bit of space there. Can you see there's a gap between the side of my hand and the neck? Okay, so the third finger should go down on its very tip right next to the nail so we're not flattening the finger down like that please never do that especially in double stops because a you won't have tuning accuracy and b you'll probably be touching the other strings which leads me on to my next uh reason why your double stops might might not sound how you want them to sound so if you're touching one of the other strings with your fingers uh this might seem obvious but it happens a lot then that's going to mute the other string and cause tuning problems and you'll get something that will sound along the lines of this. Okay, so if that's happening then check, am I touching one of the other strings of my fingers? And normally the way to best avoid doing that is to touch the string with the very tip of your finger and have nice short nails. If your nails are not short you won't be able to touch the string with the very tip of your finger. Look how short my nails are. Um, so sorry if you've got pretty nails, pretty long nails, they're going to have to go if you want to play violin properly. Okay, um, so how can you practice double stopping? So say if you've got one chord and you want to play it really well, then I recommend this exercise. So take, put the fingers on the string, check that we're in tune. Good, okay, we're ready to go. So we're going to do a very slow up bow. One quarter of the bow per note. And then down bow. And again. So this up bow allows you to check whether your notes are all clear and in tune first. Okay, so nice and simple there. So then you can just repeat that exercise until you get really comfortable with that chord. And unfortunately, like with most of the violin, it's just practice. So the more you play one chord, the more quickly your fingers will just go into that position. It's a really good idea to try practicing double stopping technical exercises. Um, so anything that has double stops in it, basically, if you look up various technical exercises, I'll link some below um, that are good for this. There's also playing scales in thirds and sixths, and it's also very handy if you have a tuner around, especially when you're practicing for uh, four string chords like we did today. Check each note on the tuner if you can't check it with your ear when doing the up bow. So have your tuner out on the desk or on a music stand in front of you, and when you're playing your slow up bow separate notes, breaking it down like that, that's the point when you check them on the tuner. You need to go quite slowly as well to check on the tuner because the tuner can be a bit slow to respond. So like this. Check it. If it's good, move on. Check it. If it's good, move on. And so on. 
So really make sure that the notes are in tune. If your ears can't tell you, you especially need to be sure before you just play it. There's no point in just playing double stops, practicing them without them being in <coughs> tune, like because then you're learning the wrong thing. So anyway, I will leave it there. Have a lovely day. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I'm gonna be releasing a video every day between now and January the 3rd and then at least once a week after that and it will all be uh, tips and tutorials and the occasional light-hearted video about learning the violin. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it or a thumbs down if you thought it was terrible, okay? Thank you, bye!